Let me show you this headline from USA Today. Sea levels rising faster now than in the past 3,000 years. By the way, there are similar headlines in the New York Times and Washington Post today. You know, we really haven't heard that much, if anything, about climate change from the candidates in this election. Joining us from our, is the governor of Ohio, John Kasich. Governor, with headlines like that that we saw today, why no climate change debate in the election campaign? Well, I've talked about climate change, Stuart. You just, you know, you haven't heard me. I said I think there is such a thing as climate change. Uh, I don't know how much human activity has influenced it, uh, but I've been a big supporter of renewables. You know, in my state, we're developing solar and wind. Uh, we have set goals in our state uh, years ago that are not achievable, not possible to achieve at this point. So I've asked the legislature to reset goals, but to keep the goals and, and, and have a situation where we have to stretch. Okay. And I think that renewables, whether it's wind, solar, geothermal, and of course the use of efficiency, is very important. We're not to worship the environment, but we certainly are to, uh, to manage it. Okay, sir. Um, you're skipping the Nevada caucus, and not skipping the caucuses, but you've not spent much time in the state. You've not really been campaigning right. there. It seems like your strategy is to look to the states next week, Super Tuesday, and concentrate your effort there. Right. Maybe you're in danger of losing some momentum if you're not out there and campaigning in Nevada? Uh, you know, it's a caucus. It, these caucuses are, are bizarre, uh, to tell you the truth, but that's what we have out there. And, we do have a ground game there, and we'll, we'll get some support there, just like uh, we did in South Carolina. But look, we're looking forward to the, uh, uh, to the March the 1st of uh, Vermont, uh, Massachusetts, both states I was in last week with enormous crowds. I was in Virginia yesterday. I was in, uh, uh, you know, at uh, uh, really all the way across the state from University of Virginia to Virginia Commonwealth up north at George Mason. Again, big crowds. Today I'm in Georgia. I'll be heading to... Uh, I don't know. Stuart, I'm all over. I'm going to Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee. Well, I don't know how you do and, it. Uh, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm you, really just, you know what? You, I'll tell you how you do it, Stuart. You, you get up, you know, you go to bed as early as you can, which is not early. You get up and, you know, say your prayers, try to, uh, you know, get ready. And, uh, you know, I try to get a little physical fitness in there. It's been tougher. And that's a big part of, of keeping going. But, you know, it's sort of like running a marathon after a while. You sort of adjust to it, but it's, uh, it's difficult, it's a challenge, and if you're not in shape, you probably can't do it. Why do you want so much to be the President of the United States? What drives you? Well, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's the, the talents that I've been given by the, uh, by the good Lord, and when you have talents, you're supposed to use them. And when you think about who's in this race, who's left in this race, I clearly have the best record, the best accomplishments of anybody in the race. You know, we, I balanced the federal budget with my uh, friend Pete Domenici. We created a lot of jobs. Uh, we had surpluses. We paid down debt, I reformed welfare. I was a Pentagon reformer. Uh, and in Ohio, we went from a loss of 350,000 jobs to a gain of over 400,000, Stuart. And we, leave, uh, we try to leave no one behind, the mentally ill, the drug addicted, and the working poor. And I, I just think we have to get this country moving in the right direction, and I know how to do it. And within 100 days, I'll give them the shock and awe plan to get this economy moving again. You haven't directly hit Donald Trump, I don't think. I mean, maybe a comment or two, but you're not going to. No, I did a couple of, you know, num yeah, a number of debates ago, I talked about his policies on, uh, on deportation. But you and haven't he and I got stood back out from the forth, pack as being particularly uh, anti-Trump. And he hasn't really attacked you that much. Yeah. Certainly nothing like uh, Cruz or, or Mr. Rubio. Um, you, you want to be the non-outsider candidate of the Republican Party. And it's you and Rubio for that role, isn't it? No, 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 no. Look, uh, uh, Stuart, I've always been a guy that has shaken up the establishment. The establishment has always been fearful of me. Look, they were fearful of Reagan. They were fearful of my friend Newt Gingrich. They're fearful of me. Nobody tells me what to do uh, except my wife. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think the establishment gets nervous around me because I'm a guy that shakes things up and I don't sit on K Street and listen to a bunch of lobbyists or Washington insiders. I never have and I never will. And in terms of, uh, of how to campaign, look, Stuart, for most of my campaign, no one knew who I was. They thought my name was governor of Ohio. And now I'm starting to get attention. We're drawing big crowds. And why do I want to go negative? Why don't I tell people what I'm for 
rather than spend my time bashing somebody else. And if that works, great. And if it doesn't work, great. You know? Governor Kasich, come on this show anytime, sir. We'd love to have you back. And thanks for being with us today, sir. All right. Thank you, Stuart. Okay.